Hey guys, CW Berman here with another lightweight video actually, although you're looking at a screenshot from uh, Video Copilot that hey, they make After Effects plugins. So what we're looking at here is Sure Target 2. Uh, this is a cool plugin for After Effects if you're doing flying from one thing to another in 3D space in After Effects. This is almost a must-have. This makes that type of action so easy, especially considering how much fun After Effects is to uh, animate in in 3D. You know, because we have this lovely little window here where we can only really see objects if they are within the screenshot, and if they're outside the screenshot, we can see an outline of them, or a wireframe of them, but you know, maybe, maybe not. Uh, Basically, what I'm doing is I'm going. I want to replicate some of the functionality of this plugin in Lightwave. I'm not the only person to do this. I'm not the first person to do this. I was thinking about doing this, but then uh, Mark beat me to it, or Raw M beat me to it. So uh, he actually posted a scene. I did not look at his scene before I made my solution, and this is an old thread. I should have just uh, looked at his scene before I made mine because we pretty much used the same technique. But uh, old thread on Lightwave. I'll post this at the end of that so it should bump to the top. But first of all, let me show you what the plugin does in After Effects. So I have, say, these four shots here, these four um, basic planes here. What SureTarget does is it lets me animate the position and rotation of the camera based on uh, the animation of another parameter entirely, and that is on the SureTarget um, layer here. If I scroll through here, I can animate this by clicking on the little stopwatch, of course, but I'm just going to scrub through it. We have uh, a bunch of different positions, and nothing's happening because I haven't set anything up yet. So we have our target one, and we'll say, make that white solid one, and we'll make that the second white solid one, and we'll make this the third white solid one. Nope, that's layer five, and layer six. Okay, now when it's at, at uh, one, let me switch to... Uh, one view. So here's my camera view. You notice when I drag this sure target option to two, our camera is now looking at this box and if I move it over here it's looking at that box and move it over to four and now it's looking at the fourth box. Third box, second box, first box. If you click auto rotate the camera will actually orientate, orient itself to that layer which makes it very useful for what we want to do just fly from thing to thing. There are other features in here uh, like uh, wiggle which will you know give a little bit of camera shake and inertia which gives it a little bit of springy action. Uh, camera roll it banks the camera like a plane. Autofocus and dolly lets us move the camera in and out. So that's the the basic gist of it. We you start off with uh, ten targets, but you can expand it to more, and you just have to manually select them, and you can bake, and you know, there's other stuff to do. But basically, all I'm concerned about right now is the um, moving and rotating into the correct position semi-automatically. So let's sh I'll show you what my current setup is for this. Um, and again, this is I'll, I'll show you uh, Raw M's version later. So here's mine. I have a target selector null right here, and you can see I have some keyframes. It moves up to one meter. You notice my position down here. One meter, and it moves to two meters and three meters. You notice my camera is flying around to each individual box just the way I want it to. Let me just hit play. I'm getting a little uh, bounce in there, which I don't necessarily want, but... Uh, Maybe if I just make the camera move slower. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, this is using... And you notice it goes back to a zero position. That's because... Oh. I don't know. Maybe I just don't have something set up on six. Or seven. I guess seven. Anyway. Let me open up my let me open up my dope sheet and we can see what's going on here. We have a null with a camera parented to it, and this camera follows this null around. We have a bunch of nulls that are our targets. These could be any item in your scene. We have this ST controller null, and this is the one that has the keyframes on it, which actually determines uh, where this is going. Uh, let's see. 
if I hit M for motion options with the ST controller available, you see that that's the controller, so there's no, that's not moving by any purpose of mine. So let's go to the camera parent null. This has the nodal motion on it. This is where all the magic happens. I open it up, I have this nice uh, compound node here that basically I just need to plug my targets into and it outputs the rotation and stuff there and this is where I select which object to use as the control which I need to set the keyframes on so this is just an item um, this is just an item info node basic item info node so if I double click on this you can see item info node and uh, I have position plugged into light wave target control and that gets uh, plugged into some stuff inside the compound node here. Again, this is just uh, picking the item that I want to take the motion and uh, and rotation from, or point to the camera at this object here. If I double-click this, this will open up and it looks like a mass of spaghetti. All it's doing is saying, hey, take the position and run it into this add camera offset and plug it into the key one on this gradient and that goes into the position and the same thing goes on with the rotation out you don't really need these camera offsets in here um, I put them in there when I was trying to make it work entirely on the camera itself without parenting the camera to the null that has this control on it but uh, those experiments didn't quite work out. But you can still use them to add uh, noise or randomization into your movement if you want to. Um, if I double click one of these, you can see I just have a bunch of nodes or keys in here. And each one of these has show output selected. And that's what you see these things getting plugged in here. If I wanted to add an 11th position, I could do that. I just changed my end position to 10 because it starts at 0. Add a key, show output, and I would have to make another input on here. So the compound node isn't the easiest thing to add more things to, but you could. I mean, you could actually just add the item info node in here and just connect it up. But anyway, I have this node and the original node that's a little, little more simple and I will include them. Uh, I'll put them up on the forum or somewhere. I don't know. I'll put them at liberty3d.com. How about that? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's basically all there is to it. Uh, the gradient is based on, or the input on the gradient is the position, or the, rather the Y position of this no, so, node. So it's basically looking at this null object to see what target should be looked at. Um, I just want to double check something. I thought I set all of these keys to linear. So, okay. I thought that might explain the uh, little rubber banding I was getting on that one move, but maybe not. Uh, you will want to you, you adjust your graph editor to control the ease in and ease out on this node on the target selector so if you hit uh, control F2 you can see I basically just have this stair stepping animation and oh it looks like I have an extra key in there that's probably why I was getting that rubber banding motion which you might actually want so that you can add it in manually you can ease in and out you could uh, you know do a step and just snap one to the other or do linear so this is yeah basically it we just fly around from box to box. It doesn't look ahead. It's very simple. It doesn't have the, the springy action on it. Although, like I said, you could kind of get that a little bit. I never did check that, did I? Oh, well. So, yeah, that's the basic uh, setup. Now, let me load up raw M's version. Load scene. Actually, load recent scene. I get this warning for some reason, and I'm on a version of Lightwave that shouldn't have that warning, but there we go. Notice his isn't actually pointing at the uh, targets. I'm not sure why that is. If something, I think something may have broken with the 
MG springy thingy uh, plugin he was using to actually get the springy motion. So if I open up my motion properties, you can see I have nodal motion here. And this is pretty much the same setup I have, except instead of running it through the color node or the color input on the gradient, he's running it into the alpha. Now the reason he's running into the alpha, or the reason you might want to run into the alpha if you build one of these yourselves, is because the alpha channel on these is not affected at all by the color space settings in Lightwave. Whereas the color channel is uh, does have the color settings uh, actually applied to that. So if you have a gam, if you're using sRGB or linear, your your um, rotation and position might be off a bit because of that. Or you know if you switch from one to the other, the the output will change. Um, he's doing it this way. He's basically splitting up X, Y, and Z and running it into X, Y, and Z and doing the same thing for uh, heading pitch bank and combining them all together and then running them out. So I'm not too worried about the color space issue. If it becomes an issue, there's a, uh, I believe DB&W has a, a color correction or a, a color space node to actually do that compensation automatically. Um, but pretty much it's the same. We just have uh, an item info node going into where we select which item we want to use or which target we want to aim at and that goes into the uh, the position and the rotation and that goes in and they all go into a gradient and the gradients get recombined into you know a single channel of information and those are all based on where is it Ta -da. a scalar node which is he basically just uh, animated it manually in the graph editor instead of having it tied to a out external control. But the reason it's not pointing at these other things is he wanted to get that springy motion in and I'm guessing it worked for him at some point but right now it doesn't seem to be so to set it up like mine we just basically go to the camera and instead of using MG springy thingy we can just set the parent item to the camera offset and now it should pretty much line up perfectly. So there you go quick little video a little longer than I maybe expected it to be but I showed you know two scenes and and after effects and a little bit of extra stuff so yeah it, flying from one position to another in 3d space in lightwave is fairly simple with uh, this rather complex looking but relatively simple and repetitive uh, node setup um, I'm glad I did mine without looking at his first because I don't feel like I plagiarized him at all. On the other hand, I may have saved myself a bit of time. But thanks for watching and uh, check out my videos at liberty3d.com where I sell some full length tutorials with content and everything. And uh, subscribe and like this video. Sorry I'm not making as many as I used to, but I do have a full time job now and I don't spend as much time in Lightwave. So thanks for watching and have a great day.